Yes, I'm Karen Ross, and I have been part of the board for about 15 years. And um, I got involved because my son uh, has generalized dystonia, and he um, was diagnosed when he was 13 years old. My name is Barb Kessler, and our son was diagnosed with generalized dystonia about maybe 30 years ago, and my husband and I joined the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation when it was in its infancy. It was only a few years old, maybe 30 years ago. Well, I'm Rosalie Lewis. I've been involved with the foundation since 1985 when the first of our four sons was diagnosed with dystonia. Since then, my other three have been diagnosed, and um, we became involved with the foundation because we wanted the hope of getting a cure for the disease. Uh, we decided, my husband and I, that anything we could do to make the lives of our children better, we would do. So one of the first people we met was this woman to my right, Bob Kessler who took us under her wing and said, we are going to make a difference. In my family, uh, we had a second cousin that we knew also had dystonia. And we didn't know how the gene was passed down or who would get it. So it was always quite a huge fear. My daughter, when she got married, decided that she was going to go ahead and ha go ahead and have children without because there was no testing at that point and she went ahead and had children we never knew well if that first grandchild was carrying the gene or would show dystonia or not so it was very very scary for a lot of years and um, eventually she found out that she was not a gene carrier but it's been a huge fear in my life for a very long time. Um, in my family, um, our son was diagnosed long before we knew that dystonia was a genetic disorder and that, in fact, he had the genetic form of dystonia. When science had advanced enough to know that there was, this was probably uh, a genetic disorder. Our whole family was tested because we wanted to know if we had other members, what the, where this all came from. And uh, we have three sons. The other two sons never showed symptoms of dystonia, but when the test was available, we had all three of them tested and we were most relieved that our other two sons did not carry the defective gene. Needless to say, we were having uh, raised a child who had um, moderate uh, generalized dystonia. We were very nervous about his future, and he was too, very concerned that this might be passed on in our family. So we never heard of dystonia. We had no idea what this disorder was. Happily married, we had children. No sign of anything wrong until one of our children developed difficulties in handwriting at the age of seven. And we figured, well, my husband has terrible handwriting. There's nothing wrong. Uh, it wasn't until the next son developed walking difficulties that we said, hmm, there's something going on. So when it was finally diagnosed, which was took about close to a year of a lot of pain because the symptoms progressed so quickly and the second son, that we decided we better start looking back previous generations to see was there any indication of dystonia anyplace else. Um, there was no physical symptoms that we could see in anybody else earlier. However, my husband's mother, my mother-in-law, when she passed away, we had her brain donated for science. And in doing the tissue analysis, Although we thought she just had Parkinson's disease, she indeed had the gene for dystonia. Mm. So we then found out that this is indeed a genetic DYT1 um, diagnosis for my family. And uh, when the fourth son was diagnosed, that's when 
it became really difficult for us to deal with keeping the hope. We were at one of our annual meetings, and it was announced, and the three of us sat there like, did we hear it? <laughs> Could that be? Exactly. And then we erupted with such jubilation, not really understanding, I don't think, what, what the what implications the, were exactly. of finding the gene. Right. Do you remember it that way? Of course. <laughs> yeah. It was a very exciting day. Actually, about five years before the gene was discovered, the same lab, uh, Dr. Sandra Brakefield at uh, Mass General, found what they called a marker mm -hmm. that showed us that uh, they were in the general vicinity of finding a defective mm. gene. For a while, they were using that marker to do blood tests to see um, if people had the probability of mm -hmm. carrying the defective yeah. gene. It took another five years or so for them to actually identify the defective gene, and that's when we were so excited and we didn't know that was only the beginning of right. other great right. advances. Right. 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 And we ex did not know what it meant that they found the gene. We just knew that it was the first step in, in beginning to even have any hope mm -hmm. about a cure, about treatment, about research, because before that, there was no research really that that could help because mm -hmm. we didn't know what the gene was and where it was. We just had the marker for it. Mm -hmm. So isolating the gene allowed a blood test to be taken so that, let's say, I go into the doctor, I get a blood test, they have to send the blood out to a special lab, but I find out, am I a gene carrier? Am I not a gene carrier? My son said that he would never have children because he never wanted to take the chance of having a child uh, that would have dystonia. So I never expected that he would have a child. He's now 50 years old and he's uh, been married just about four or five years. And recently, because of our genetic testing, he, they were able to go ahead and get pregnant and they're now um, five months pregnant and the fetus has no, no dystonia gene. That's or as a result of the science that we've done. And that is what has brought such uh, mm -hmm. joy to us. I have, our son is married. He has two sons who do not carry the defective dystonia gene. It was a huge concern. He also said he had no desire to bring up a child who was suffering from dystonia. He didn't want his children to suffer the way he did. Well, before he and Wendy were married, Wendy participated in a number of things, in a number of activities sponsored by the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation. She educated herself about dystonia. They made some decisions. And sure enough, they've been able to have two normal sons, and there just couldn't be anything better for a grandparent than that. that. Absolutely. We're well, all let, me, so... let me smile, because we just came back from where my son and his wife had twins, born just two weeks ago. Clear of dystonia. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you so much for considering the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation and your charitable gifts. It helps all of us. Thank you for your interest in dystonia, and thank you for supporting our organization. Thank you for everything that you've done to help the Dystonia Foundation become the organization that it is today.